Good morning and welcome to the service from the Brecon Presbyterian Church in the Watton on Sunday the 19th of February. We start with a few announcements. Next Sunday the 26th the service will be led by Mr Rob Morse from Llandovery. The Sunday after that, Sunday the 5th, will be our bilingual communion service for March. Very important notice now, this Tuesday the church annual general meeting is to be held in the schoolroom at 2.30pm. Church AGM 2.30pm this Tuesday afternoon. And uh, there's not an awful lot of people in, in church this morning. I hope that there'll be a few people at the AGM. It's for everyone. You don't have to be a member or a full member. It's for anyone who's interested and wish to hear what's going on, what's planned, and put a bit of input in as well into suggestions and discussions. So that's this Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. All welcome. Uh, and that's uh, Shrove Tuesday, isn't it, on Tuesday? So who knows? Perhaps there'll be some pancakes or something at the AGM. Who knows? We never know. Um, now then, the following Tuesday, and through Lent, there will be Lent uh, groups. They're described as a school of prayer, which is a bit um, confusing. It's not a school. It won't be a class. It won't be a lecture. It will be a session of prayer led by different people from different churches in different traditions and different styles of combined prayer. Reflective, meditative, liturgical, whatever they choose to do. So each one will be led by a different person or group of people from churches in the town. And these Lent groups are going to be held on Tuesdays at St Mary's Church at 6.30 in the evening, starting a week this Tuesday, starting on the 28th. And there will be five sessions going on to the 28th of March. So, Lent groups at St Mary's. I hope people can support those. I'll definitely be going and supporting them. And I think that some of the uh, people leading them will have creative and interesting and different ways of praying together. I've been asked to announce that the flower list has got a lot of spaces on it. But there are a lot of gaps from March and for April, so if you are able to help with providing flowers for the communion table, please put your name on the list on one of those uh, slots there. I think probably those are all the announcements. And so we come to worship God. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire beside you. But for me it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. O oh God, you are the most wise, most great, most holy in wisdom and power. Lord, you created us in your own image, and you wrote your law within our hearts. In our hearts, most sacred, most secret chamber, you are now waiting to meet and speak with us, freely offering us your fellowship in spite of all our sinning. Let us approach your presence humbly. Let us come in the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us leave behind us 
all fretfulness, all unworthy desires, all thoughts of malice, that we may surrender our wills to your will. For in your will, O Lord, is our peace. Amen. I chose the hymns for this service uh, on Tuesday, on Valentine's Day, and, uh, you know, they're all related to love, these hymns, although that's not the whole theme of the service, it's part of the theme of our service, but all our hymns are either about our love for one another, or for God, or, or God's love for us. And the first one is very simple little chorus that we're going to sing. Let there be love shared among us. It's so short that I think we can definitely sing it twice. And um, we sing it as a prayer, asking God to shed his love in our hearts. And we remain seated while we sing this worshipful chorus. It's number 329, sorry. Turn to the Pew Bibles if you've got one near you, and we're going to read together a psalm. We're going to read the words of Psalm 25. And you will find them on page 556. And I'm trying to find the page myself. Page 556 five, in the Pew Bibles. Let's uh, read together Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame. But they are treacherous, treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are my God, my Saviour. 
my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his command. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then is the man that fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. He will spend his days in prosperity, and his descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have multiplied. Free me from my anguish. Look upon my affliction and my distress, and take away all my sins. See how my enemies have increased, and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope is in you. Redeem Israel, O God, from all their troubles. That was quite a long reading, wasn't it? And uh, thank you for keeping going there. The psalmist expressing his trust in God, his faith and his hope in God. I have a second reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, starting to read at verse 1. If you want to look at it in the Pew Bibles, it's on page 1186. Letter from the Apostle Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silas and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labour prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of severe suffering, <coughs> you welcomed the message with a joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Here ends the reading.
We sing together number 362. Lord, the light of your love is shining. Let us turn to God in prayer. O Lord, our God, you are the King of love. You've made us, created us in your own image, and we belong to you. You've shown your love for us in the coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and in the sending of the Holy Spirit. So we bless you, Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray for your blessing 
upon all those who are seeking to do your work of caring, upon all who are caring for your people, who are exercising a ministry within the church, church leaders, elders, ministers, and all leaders in different denominations, in different traditions, all who preach your word and who administer the sacraments and all who show pastoral care. We pray for your blessing upon all our work and outreach. We pray upon your, for your blessing upon the churches in the town of Brecon and their church leaders. May they all truly follow and proclaim your word and bring a unity that comes from being one in Christ. We ask your blessing on the Lent groups that are planned and the united services that are planned later in the year and the walk of witness on Good Friday. May we all join together in love and unity to proclaim Christ. And we pray, Lord, for all church members, all who have committed themselves and have joined the church and all who worship regularly. May we all be true followers, true disciples of the Lord Jesus. May we all share in your outreach and mission of love. We pray especially for those who have special ministries reaching out to those who are lost, those who are confused, or those who are troubled or trapped by addictions or harmful lifestyles. O King of love, Good Shepherd, hear us. O loving Lord, we ask your blessing upon this world, which is your creation. We remember today all who are struggling throughout the world against evil in one form or another. For the people living under conditions of war in Ukraine, Yemen and Ethiopia and other parts of the world. For those who are struggling against poverty, famine in parts of East Africa, drought, destruction of the environment, shortage of food and grain because of the war in Ukraine. Lord, for all who are struggling against natural disasters, we pray for all those still suffering in Turkey and Syria, the effects of the earthquake. Help is still needed. May your blessing, Lord, be upon all who are seeking to reach out, relief organisations and those who are trying to bring help. Lord, we pray for all who share in your redeeming work through their caring for others <clears throat> and all who reach out to those in need. We pray for the work of the food banks at this time. As so many of them are not having sufficient food to provide. And we pray, Lord, for all those who are suffering poverty and struggling to pay their bills in this crisis. Help us to be generous and to do what we can, Lord. King of love, good shepherd, hear us. We pray for your blessings, Lord, upon our homes our families, our loved ones, upon our children or grandchildren, family members, some who may be far away across the world, some who live closer to us. 
We pray for your blessing on them. And we remember those who do not have the blessings of family life, those who are lonely, those who are homeless, those who are alienated from their families, and all whose lives are dimin diminished by circumstances that they've not been able to avoid. O oh Lord, King of love, good shepherd, hear us. We ask your blessing, Lord, on those at this time who are in hospital or at home and unwell and for loved ones who are caring for them, for all who are anxious and fearful. Pray, Lord, for our health service and our caring services with all the strain that they're under at the present. We pray, Lord, that there will be an improvement. And we pray, Lord, that there will be a resolution to all the current industrial action. King of love, good shepherd, hear us. We thank you, Lord, for friends and loved ones who have departed this life in the faith of Christ. We thank you that they are now in your nearer presence, rejoicing in eternal life. And we thank you, Lord, that we too, if we trust in Jesus, can share in that life eternal. Hear these our prayers, which we bring in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us sing together the hymn 780, another modern hymn. Um, I'm sure you know it, but it's quite often sung on Songs of Praise, and it's, we have sung it a few times in this church as well. Wonderful words by Stuart Townend. And the tune is not a difficult one either. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. 